My name is Apoorv Sinha, and I'm the founder and CEO of Carbon Upcycling Technologies. And we founded ourselves in Canada four years ago to make CO2 green. As I'm sure many of the people in this room are aware, uh, climate change is a big problem. Uh, I'm an engineer, so I like to think about things in numbers. One number that put the problem in perspective for us was if you take the weight of every single human being on the planet, the weight of our emissions every year is 100 times more than the weight of humanity as a whole. So just think about that. We're putting 100 times the weight of our species into the atmosphere every year uh, since 2014. And so to tackle this problem, we think we have to get really small, even though the problem's really big. Uh, so we went down to chemistry, and what we found is that there is an energy-efficient, scalable way to capture these emissions, and not only capture them so that it's a cost to society, but to capture them in a way that actually creates a better society, which is more advanced than the, the one we live in today. Our technology, for any engineers or, or scientists in the room, uh, it's basically a chemical adsorption process. We take carbon emissions uh, in gaseous form, we fix it into a solid powder, so we basically combine or trap that gas into a solid powder, and what we make at the end of it is nanomaterials. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what nanomaterials are on the next slide, but essentially, one of our big findings in the last four years was we don't just have to use one type of material to capture CO2. Depending on where you are in the world, you have access to different powders or formations in, in the geology. We can use a range of these different materials to capture CO2. What we found is that this capture is stable and is significant. The numbers here can actually move the needle on climate change. To give you an idea on some of the products, and I, I realize I might lose you on that, but some of the products that we make are not things that you hear about every day. These are nanomaterials ranging from one nanometer in size, which is literally a thousand times smaller than a strand of your hair, or some other nanoplatelets, which are the size of, your, of blood in your body. But what we found is these products aren't really products. Like, you can't go out to the market and sell these like you would gasoline or cars or baskets. So what we found is we had to do a lot of work with academic and research partners to find where the applications for these technologies actually lie. Over the last couple of years, we've shown that these materials, which might not sound like household names, can be used in things that we do use in our homes, like concrete or plastic parts that you might buy from a hardware store. They can be used in construction, in photovoltaic cells, so solar panels to increase their efficiency. And in fact, about two years ago, we started a project with a cancer drug delivery research group in Waterloo, Canada, and we showed that these materials, which are derived from pollution, can actually potentially be used for chemotherapy drugs as well. So as you can see, there's a range of different applications, and what we're excited about is showing that this isn't just something that is driven by sustainable reasons, because we think that the market is not quite ready for that, but we think that this is a business model that allows us to create real products to sell into the market, and then also create carbon reductions every time that we do make a sale. We wanted to give you guys a couple of examples of iterations of this technology that are already in the market today. So in the States, we launched an alpha carbon coating product two years ago. This is a coating very similar to something you might buy at the store when you do a home renovation project, but this is specifically designed for water and wastewater infrastructure. Uh, this is a product that we installed in Florida as well as in Oregon about two years ago. It's a product that is being used by fairly large uh, brands, including McDonald's and Walmart. And currently, uh, keeps gaining acceptance in, in the US as well as in Europe. We think that this is a concrete example, a pun intended, where we're showing that these carbon emissions are not only creating an environmental case, but also a sustainable economic case that makes sure that there is actual real adoption on the ground. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the potential impact in some work that we're doing with a concrete company in France, in fact. What we found there is that one use of this technology can not only capture enough carbon to take as many as 29 or 30 million cars off the road, but actually make our, our buildings 20 to 30% stronger as well, and potentially give them much longer lives than they're currently used to. I'd like to finish by just saying our, our team is quite small. We're still in the startup phase. Uh, we're all based in Canada, but looking to make more inroads into the European market, which is one of the reasons we're here. And our interest in, in coming to the event here today was primarily to engage with any kind of entities or, or organizations that are looking to create a real tangible product from carbon emissions. We realize that this is not something that is, is 
generally kind of the hot topic in many startup conferences. A lot of it is around machine learning, AI, and a lot of software trends. But in, in this hardware space, uh, we're looking to engage with institutions or individuals that are active in infrastructure, concrete, plastics, or coatings, or uh, just in reducing emissions in batteries or automobiles as well. Thank you again for your time, and I look forward to talking to some of you later. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Apoor.